Good morning, and welcome to Old South Church. Good morning. Thank you, bud. <laughs> uh, my name is Jennifer Lipster. Uh, Pastor Karen is at the UCC Synod in Indianapolis this weekend, but she will be back next Sunday for worship. I welcome all of you to this time of worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Whether you are here in person or virtually, we are all gathered in God's loving presence. We come seeking renewal for doing God's work in a hurting world. Let us join in the spirit of divine love to soothe our souls and feed our hungry hearts. Let us center ourselves with our prelude. Welcome to Old South Church, United Church of Christ. Welcome to believers, to questioners, and to questioning believers. We gather in the hope of creating a safe space where you are free to risk being your authentic self, no matter how you identify or express your race, gender, or sexuality. You are welcome here, for this is God's house, and God welcomes all ages, colors, cultures, gifts, and abilities. Your presence here is a gift that challenges us to open our doors as wide as God's welcome. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here by the God who made you and loves you just the way you are and loves you enough to challenge you to keep growing towards the person God made you to be, that together we may choose love and seek justice for all. As God did with Abraham and Sarah, God can touch our lives and they can become extraordinary. In this church, God has gathered us into a community of common folk and naysayers, prophets and puzzled people. God has called us and made a place for all. So let what we say and do here, what we ponder and decide here, be real for us and honest to God. We are gathered to prepare for the life in the world in which God calls us to serve. Please stand as you are able for our first hymn, number seven. Thank you. 
To you, O God, all creatures sing, and all creation, everything, sings your praises, hallelujah, your burning sun with golden flame, your silver moon with softer gleam, sing your praises, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Your wind that blows the tempest by, your cloud that sailed across the sky, sing your praises, hallelujah. Your morning rises with a song, and lights of evening sing along, sing your praises, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your flowing waters crystal clear make melodies for you to hear. Sing your praises, hallelujah. Your fire bountiful and bright, remembering your warmth and light, sings your praises, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Day after day, your planet Earth in every way sings your praises, hallelujah. Your savory fruit and fragrant flower show forth your glory and your power. Singing praises, sing alleluia, 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 alleluia. Good morning. Kids, am I right? We grow up thinking, when I have kids, things are going to be different. I'll give my kids whatever I didn't have when I was growing up. It's going to be great reliving my youth with my kids. I'm going to shower them with love and affection. But then reality hits. You're a little bit older than you thought you'd be when the first one comes along. Sure, you're excited, but you don't have the energy you thought you'd have. But you do your best. Oh, and the sacrifices parents make. Soccer and baseball games on the same day. Hours spent trying to understand the new math so you can help with homework rather than watching your favorite TV show. And then there's the trek up the mountain with a load of firewood so you can turn that kid you love so much into a burned sacrifice because God told you to do so. What? The scripture today is from Genesis 2, 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham 
He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Morah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance where God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young man, stay here and with the donkey, the boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, father. And he said, here I am, my son. He said, the fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. And the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withdrawn your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. May we hear God's wisdom in the reading. Amen. The Lord will provide. Today's sermon is the outcome of a great deal of struggle. You see, when one of us guest preachers is called on to preside on a given Sunday, the first thing we have to do is to look at what that date happens to be in our lectionary. Today, for example, is the fifth Sunday of Pentecost, and because our lectionary covers years A, B, and C, we have to see which year it is. This is year A. The next thing we have to do is to find the available scripture readings for that particular Sunday. There are like six different readings to choose from. There are Psalms, Old Testament passages, New Testament passages, and we read through them and see which one of them we want to preach about. No, which one God calls us to preach about. And that's where my struggle began. I didn't like the scripture that called to me. It was awful. I read it. I let it ruminate in my soul for quite some time until I decided to look for a different one to talk about. The wage of sin is death? No. How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? Prophets yelling at each other about which one is right? No, thank you. So here we have Abraham, who leads his son Isaac up the mountain so he can offer him up as a sacrifice. I've struggled with this passage since the first time I heard it years ago. And now Abraham's struggle becomes mine. Let's take this journey together, shall we? You can carry the firewood. Don't worry, you can trust me. To help us formulate a sermon from the reading, we enlist the help of commentaries. 
There are 12 volumes of these in Pastor Karen's office. Or should we so desire, we can find them online. More things to read and to allow our souls to ruminate on? Ruminate, like a cow or some other ungulate. Perhaps a goat, which would make a lot more sense to sacrifice than a child would. Why didn't Abraham lead a goat up the mountain instead? Because God told him to bring his son. That's why. That's not all God told Abraham either. Years earlier, when Abram was only 75, God told him to go to a new place, that it would become the land of his many offspring. Okay, so off he went with his wife Sarah and his nephew Lot, you know, the guy whose wife turned into a pillar of salt because she didn't listen to God, and a bunch of other people. No questions asked, no nothing. Off they went because God told them to. They ended up in Canaan of all places, which of course is present day Israel. So God made good on that promise. It was not, however, an easy trek. Abraham had to pass Sarah off as his sister so he wouldn't be killed when she was placed in a Pharaoh's harem. Lot was kidnapped, so Abraham had to rescue him. All the while, he's wondering how he's going to be the father of so many people if his wife is barren. But God told him he would be. Keep calm and trust God, right? So often we hear of a person who is in the middle of some trial or tribulation. Someone usually will say, pray about it, or place your troubles at the cross. Have faith. One of these people is a good friend of mine who has her own troubles. Epilepsy as a child, multiple surgeries, inability to keep a job, financial difficulties as a result of all of this. But she has a countenance about her that exudes peace and harmony. She attends church regularly and volunteers with various groups several times a year. She has so little to give, yet she gives so much. She has told me that it's what God wants her to do, and that's what makes her happy. There is no doubt in her mind that God has taken care of her through her family, her friends, and through her church. God provides. But Sarah, due to her apparent infertility, has doubts that God's plan for Abraham to father nations will come to pass. So she sends her handmaiden, Hagar, as a surrogate to get things started, so to speak. Abraham went along with the idea, and the result was Ishmael, whom God eventually rejected, and Abraham banished from the group along with his mother. Fourteen years later, at the ripe old age of 100, Abraham and Sarah finally have their own son, Isaac, just like God said. Hallelujah! So, how do we go from, you're going to have a baby and nations hereafter, to take your kid up the mountain and sacrifice him. According to one commenter, during the early days of the Israelites, it was a common practice that every firstborn that opens the womb, whether human or animal, was to be set apart for the Lord. They went on to say that in another tradition, firstborn humans are to be redeemed simply by the payment of five shekels of silver. To me, that would be taking the easy way out. Of course, Sarah tried taking the easy way out, and look how that turned out for Ishmael and Hagar. Better to put your faith in God, no? 
because God provides. But sometimes that is a difficult thing to do. To relinquish control and to give it to God or to put it at Christ's feet on the cross. I know people who have had to do that. They watched their own child plagued with inner demons, ready to take their own life to be rid of the pain. It was a two-year battle to get the help their child so desperately needed. Two years of wondering if that day would be the day they would have said goodbye for the last time. Two years of worrying and hoping and praying that their child would come home from work that night in order to save their sanity, in order to save themselves. They put all their worries, all their anxiety, all of their trust into God's hands. Thankfully, God provided in the form of doctors, therapists, medications, and insurance to help cover the expense. Not all children or their parents are so fortunate, however. Suicide rates among teens have increased by 71% in the last decade, resulting in 1,000 767 deaths in 2021 alone. This is attributed to increases in untreated depression and the limited availability for mental health care. LGBTQ youth are four times as likely to attempt suicide as their peers, with legislation in process in several states to keep them from getting the help they need how can they even hope to have someone to trust to help them? But trust is exactly what Abraham did when he took Isaac up the mountain that day. He had Isaac carry the firewood while he carried the fire and the knife. When Isaac asked about the animal for the sacrifice, his father replied, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And on they went up the mountain. I can't imagine what thoughts were going through Abraham's mind. This is my only heir. How am I to be the father of nations? God said it would happen. But God is telling me to kill my son. Abraham even went so far as to build the altar, lay the firewood on it, tie up his son, and wield the knife, ready to turn him over to that same God he trusted so much, who promised him so much, who always made good on God's promises. But trust he did, and it worked out for him too. God sent an angel who said, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And at the last moment, God provided a ram for the sacrifice. I can only imagine the conversation between father and son on the way back down the mountain. Or was it an awkward silence as each pondered the gravity of what had just happened? One thing I continue to grapple with is that God called Abraham to sacrifice his son in the first place. Then at the last minute, stayed his hand did God make a mistake and suddenly realize it? Was this a test of God's trust in Abraham or Abraham's trust in God? Or was this a call to end the contemporary practice of child sacrifice? You have to remember 
that this is the same God whose only son, one of Isaac's descendants, mind you, carried his own armload of wood to his own sacrifice. Where was God at that time? Why didn't God stay the executioner's hand at that time? Where was Jesus' interceding angel? This whole story makes me wonder how we are caring for God's children today. Are we being tested like Abraham was tested by God? Are today's suffering children being sacrificed due to us not listening to God? Abraham was given a gift and then asked to give it up. We are given children to care for, and we sometimes give them up, or we give up on them. According to the Children's Defense Fund, of the 74 million children living in the United States, 11 million live in poverty. That's one in seven. Nine million face hunger and food insecurity. Four million live without health insurance. Over four million youth and young adults experience homelessness annually. As much as God provides, I think that we must be God's hands on earth. I believe that all of us are that interceding angel, that it is incumbent on all of us to stop today's practice of child sacrifice and to help our children, our future, by giving them the support that they so desperately need. Writing to our senators and representatives is one way to affect changes in health care policy and social resources. That path is long and arduous. And in the long run, it's what needs to happen. So do it. But how many more children will be lost in the time it takes for those changes to happen? We need something more immediate something more doable as an individual. If you know of a young person who is struggling with their own identity and needs support, or you would like to know more about how to help, there are resources available. The TrevorProject.org is one. There are resources on that site for young members of the LGBTQ community, but also for their allies. Or, if you know of a child who is experiencing abuse, bullying, untreated depression, hunger, or needs support in any way, check out the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, ncadv.org, or even the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, aacap.org for resources or make a call to 211 for social services ranging from shelter to health care and legal assistance or 988 for the suicide hotline you can do this for yourself or anonymously for someone else but do something so many children each year are being led up a mountain with no one to help them. Be their interceding angel. Be God's hands on earth. Be the one to help those who can't help themselves. Amen. We come to a moment of for gratitude. And although we do not pass the offering plates during the summer, we do invite you to consider the many blessings in your lives. For this community of faith, for people who faithfully gather here, for God's movement in our lives. We do respond to these great gifts by sharing a portion of our time, talents, and treasure with others. And I invite you to place a gift in the offering plate on your way out today or on our website. 
May the gifts received by this community of faith be used with wisdom and compassion. And now, Ralph. song that God has blessed me with. So today, uh, as I move along here, uh, somehow, years ago I didn't have this issue. I don't know what that was all about. I don't remember when I wrote this song, so it must have been a while back. Um, I don't think it was during college or seminary days, but uh, a little somewhere in between. So it's called The Spirit of God's Love. Never really understood, never really thought I could, but now I know. God is real I didn't think that it meant me when the Bible said to just believe but now I know that God really loves me and the spirit of God's love is deep within my heart the spirit of the Lord is in my soul Spirit of the Lord is in my soul. I used to be so all alone, did everything on my own, not really knowing which way to turn. Then a light into my darkness came, and I knew I'd never be the same. For now I see the way of my Lord and the spirit of God's love is deep within my heart the spirit of the Lord is in my soul the spirit of the Lord is in my soul it's possible that you might too not really know just what to do because you're feeling so lost and alone don't be afraid to open up God's love is great it's big enough yes God's as near as the breath that you breathe and the spirit of God's love will be deep within your heart Spirit of the Lord is in your soul. Yes, the Spirit of God's love is deep within our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord is in our soul. The Spirit of the Lord is in our soul. going to do prayer. Oh. Then communion. Wait. Yes. Prayer first. Communion. At least that's that's what it says on the sheets, right? <laughs> <laughs> you need a on the fly? I, I do. I need a prayer on the fly. I don't have one. <laughs> Look, Don's coming to get one. No, I didn't have a prayer prepared for the offering. Oh, <laughs> oh I see. Oh, a prayer for you. Oh, wait, Steve's helping me out. I think <laughs> is... Nope. That? That's the pastoral prayer. Uh, Joys and concerns. Mm. 
Ralph, can you help me out? I can. I can. <laughs> Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we do thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion of all that you have given to us. What a joy it is to, to live in such abundance that we can share. So as we uh, lift up these gifts to you, we ask that you bless them and uh, help us to continue the the mission and ministry here at Old South and, uh, and beyond. Uh, to all of those who are in need, <coughs> we just ask that you continue to let your spirit be upon us and these gifts. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray all these things. Amen. Joys and, joys and concerns. We can do joys and concerns. We come to a time for sharing our joys and concerns. So here comes our microphone. Well, I'll share my joy. You may have noticed we have new microphones today. <laughs> and they were planned to be outside. But... God had other ideas, I guess. But they seem to be working great. And if you have comments, or let me know what you think. But I won't be here for the next two weeks, so no. <laughs> my concern is for my sister who lives in Georgia. She fell and broke her arm and turns out She's going to have surgery, and uh, that causes us to cancel our family reunion because she is the sole driver. Her husband was hit with Agent Orange overseas. Thank you. My concern is for our um, daughter-in-law, uh, Lauren. Um, for those of you who know my son, Ricky, <laughs> his wife. Uh, a couple years ago, I think about three years ago, uh, she was in a sledding accident with her son, her young son. She put herself over him when they went flying off the, uh, the hill into a tree. He was just fine, but um, she broke her back in several different places. And um, it's been a, a long, hard road but she still is having uh, difficulties with um, pains in her legs and, and, and her muscles not working right. And she's going in for an MRI um, tomorrow and uh, to see if there's anything more that they can do if there's something that's pressing where it shouldn't be pressing or whatever. So um, prayers for Lauren. I just want to welcome my grandson from Colorado, my mountain man, Bryce. <laughs> um, uh, a little prayer for my wife, Nora. Uh, yesterday at 3 o'clock, I took her to the airport to fly to Chicago, and then on from there to uh, Iceland. Uh, she is still sitting in uh, the airport in Chicago. Uh, she will get back in Cleveland uh, tonight. Uh, it's been uh, uh, just one kind of disaster after the other. Um, so just a small prayer for her, for her sanity, by the way, when she gets back. <laughs> I have a request for prayers for two of my friends where I live. One of them is a man named Dominic. He uh, is 92 years old, and he fell and broke his hip and was taken to uh, Giaga Hospital a week ago, and we haven't heard about his condition, but I ask you to pray for him. And also for a neighbor across the street, her name is Carol, 95 years old, broke, fell and broke six bones in her body, plus she has Alzheimer's that she's battling. So her husband Lyle could use the prayers too. Thanks.
um, I have a concern for um, uh, a uh, very good friend, work colleague. Um, she took her mother in Wednesday for shortness of breast, breath, and um, they found a mass on her lung. Um, so um, uh, just prayers for um, my friend Kelly Lambert and her uh, family. Thank you. I have a joy um, that we are celebrating Jackson's 13th birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Side note, prayers for uh, my husband and I because we have a house of teenagers now. <laughs> Jackson didn't want me to say that. Is it on? Yeah. Uh, I have two, Veltas and Ausma, uh, who also suffers from depression, fell the other day and she now has a concussion and a severely broken wrist. So for her, and also for Peter and his friend Jason, who are leaving tomorrow for a month-long trek on the Colorado Trail, 500 miles. So, thank you. Let us gather those things which were shared aloud and those we have kept in our hearts. Let us take a few moments and give our attention to the holy mystery that dwells within us, first with song and then with a moment of holy stillness. Please remain seated. Our God belongs to all people and treasures each individual. Let us pray for them. Holy friend, healer, and liberator, we lift up before you those people who are at this very moment suffering from either accident, disease, their own folly, or the cruelty of others. At this moment, many fellow human beings are crying out against the cruelty of captivity hostages and abducted children, prisoners of war and political detainees, and many mistakenly convicted. At this moment, many of our fellows are suffering physical and mental abuse, battered wives and children, verbally abused and are threatened with injury. At this moment, there are people who are traumatized by sudden injury victims of industry or the highways, soldiers wounded in battle, and those maimed by the carelessness of others. At this moment, there are thousands who are in terror or despair because of natural disasters, flood and house fires, cyclone and earthquake, avalanche or brush fire, drought or lightning strike, storm waves or volcanic eruption. This week, we celebrate the birth of this nation with gratitude, compassion, and hope. We pray that you help your church and our country to do whatever we can to lessen the multiple sufferings of humanity. Encourage each of us to rest our own pain and grief in your infinite mercy and to not cease from righteous anger, prayer, and appropriate action while injustice and neglect exist anywhere on this planet. We offer these prayers and the prayers of our hearts 
In the name of Jesus, our brother, our teacher, and redeemer, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever. Forever. Amen. That's what we do when we take on a, a special thing. That's why Steve has a tie on today. I don't know if that would have been true if you were in the Dell or not. I didn't roll my sleeves up either. Well, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, let's see if I can get this to work. All right. So as we continue along in, in our journey through this season of Pentecost, we, we gather on this day to share again in the bread and the cup of our Lord Jesus Christ, a holy meal. What began in the upper room with Jesus and his disciples has been a, a holy tradition observed throughout the ages by, by all who believe in Jesus as Lord of life and love and forgiveness. After we seek a blessing on these holy elements of bread and cup, we will we'll share an invocation in two parts. And so the first part will be for the bread of life, and uh, then we'll, we'll take it uh, uh, together. So I would suggest that if you take your cup, uh, you can get your little bread part there all set to go because that will be first in order. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, we'll have the second part of that invocation where, where we will uh, share the cup of salvation. And we'll do that together. So let us come to the table of the Lord uh, as we sing our communion hymn, which is number two. We're going to sing all the verses. Peace. 
This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of joy. Come to the table of joy. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of joy. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of hope. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of hope. I also looked at the lectionary today. And uh, in the, uh, the gospel reading for today comes out of Matthew chapter 10 and uh, verse 40 and 42. And in verse uh, 40, Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. While he was saying this to his disciples, I also think that it also applies to Jesus' disciples throughout all time and space. That means any and all who, who want to know about Jesus, any and all who, who long for God's presence and want to know the love of God, anyone who desires to come is welcome here to experience the love and grace of Jesus Christ. So all are welcomed at this table. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you that you have welcomed us to your table of grace. Let us open our hearts to all who come to share in your holy presence as well. Empower us through your spirit to love all people as you do. Fill us with your love in such a way that, that no division will have a place in our lives and our hearts. We thank you for these symbols of bread and cup and ask that you bless them and, and let your blessing be upon them as we partake of them so that we may, may be reminded that you gave so much to demonstrate your love for us. As we take together the bread and the cup, May we truly be together as one people of faith, demonstrating your love to the world. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. So this is what we know. On the night that Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, he took bread and having blessed it, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, remember me. Let us partake of the bread of life. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup and having given thanks, he said, this is the new covenant, the new relationship between you and your God. 
It is also my blood that has been shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink of it, remember me. Let us partake of the cup of salvation. As often as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you are witnesses to the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we share in his abundant love and grace and forgiveness. Amen. Uh, Do we have a witness for justice? Oh, Don's coming up. So our snippet we call this this morning is about what we've been doing for the last few months. We're halfway, or a little over halfway, in our journey to educating ourselves towards declaring Old South Church to being a just peace church. Perhaps it is helpful at this time to review review what is meant by the phrase just peace. The history of the Just Peace movement within the United Church of Christ has evolved since its beginning in 1981 through a process of study and discernment firmly rooted in the Bible and theology. Quoting from the UCC's Just Peace Church handbook, this biblical and theological foundation brings to light the importance of justice and peace as the elements that can offer hope for not only our congregates, but also our neighbors near and far. This speaks, again quoting the handbook, to the overarching call from Jesus to love God, ourselves, and one another, just as God mercifully loves us and calls us to ministries of love and justice. The UCC defines just peace as a holistic view of working at the interrelation of friendship, justice, and common security from violence. It acknowledges the connections between violence, and systemic issues like environmental degradation, racism, economic disparity, homophobia, and the loss of civil and human rights. Speaking from the hope in the gospel that God's peace is a gift promised for all, our pronouncement is offered with the prophetic conviction that the vision that war can and must be eliminated and the shared hope that peace is possible. So, our educational activities have, in the past six months, completed our study of just peace with the earth, so that life is sustained, and just peace in the marketplace, so that all may live in dignity. At the beginning of June, we started just peace in the community, so that all may live free from fear. And in September, we will start to study just peace among nations, so that human lives are protected. The Witness for Justice team thanks you for your attention and participation in the effort for Old South to become a just peace church. Thank you, Don. And now we have a moment with our pastoral search committee, Bud. Thank you. I have a lengthy message, so I wrote it all down. Uh, It's small print. Um, I think this is the announcement you've been waiting for. On behalf of the entire search committee, I'm proud to announce that the search committee has selected um, a candidate, and the administrative council has approved it, and we will be voting on it as a congregation on um, July 23rd. The candidate's name is Pastor Brenda Waddell. She is currently serving as the associate pastor for pastoral care at Bath Church, United Church of Christ, in here in nearby Bath, Ohio. It's a very large church, um, but she is very much looking forward um, to being responsible for 
all of our souls um, and, and leading here um, at Old South. Many of you may already know Pastor Brenda. Pastor Brenda is Pastor Karen's wife. And she has enthusiastically uh, accepted um, our invitation. This week, you will receive in the mail, and it will include two letters. The first is inviting you um, to, or advising you of the con congregational meeting on July 23rd to accept Pastor Karen, uh, Pastor Brenda. Boy, I make that mistake all the time, and those on the search committee uh, can say that. I know. That's <laughs> the second thing will also be inviting you uh, to a meet and greet here at the church on Saturday, July 22nd, and I think that's set for 7 o'clock. Um, there's a lot, the other item in, in, the, in the mailer will be a letter from all of us on the search committee um, giving you a bio of uh, Pastor Karen, uh, Pastor Brenda, uh, and her journey. Um, it's, it's uh, I think you will all be as impressed as we were. Um, so, before you ask me all kinds of questions about her, um, please uh, read the, uh, the letter, and then I'd be happy to uh, um, answer any questions. Uh, a couple of things I just want to point out. Um, number one, the search committee, uh, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey for all of us to find uh, a settled pastor. Uh, fortunately, uh, we had a very good interim pastor during that time, which not only um, led us to find a new pastor, but also kept us active and helped change uh, this, this church. Um, I can say on behalf of the search committee as well as the administrative council that we unequivocally recommend um, Pastor uh, Brenda. Uh, even though it was a lengthy process, we also did have, near the end, several very, very qualified candidates. And over the last two or three weeks, we have probably met 10 times um, to discuss uh, candidates, uh, to conduct ongoing interviews, um, and we think we selected uh, the best of the best in Pastor Brenda. One last thing. Um, this is confidential, um, and that's in accordance with normal practice. Pastor Brenda will not be advising her church until after the congregational vote, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, we won't be posting this on our website or our Facebook page, and we ask until after July 23rd that you do the same, because it wouldn't be fair um, to Pastor Brenda. Um, thank you. We are, I just want to say, we are ecstatic um, and we're tired, um, and we're also uh, glad that the journey's near its end, and we will be celebrating it uh, shortly. Um, and oh, but the uh, target date for her to start full time uh, is, I think, September 12th, um, and between now and then, Pastor Ken, uh, Karen will still be with us. Uh, so it should be a, 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 you know, continue to be a very full summer uh, for Old South. Thank you. Thanks, Bud. And we have a time for announcements. And their birthday celebrant is coming around. <laughs> Any announcements today? I don't know if this is so much an announcement. I guess I probably should have did it under the joy category. Um, it's an interesting weekend for me. Uh, my father, mother uh, passed away. My father's birthday was July 2nd today. My mother's birthday tomorrow, July 3rd. And their anniversary was Saturday, July 1st. I went to the cemetery with flowers and. Uh, put them on their graves and uh, said a few prayers. I mean, they've been gone for 15, 18 years, respectively. But um, 
I was very happy and proud to be able to do that for my parents at the cemetery. Thanks. Uh, this Wednesday is July 5th, and from 11 to 5, we have a blood drive happening here. Um, the goal is 24 pints. 15 appointments are filled of 53 slots, so there's plenty of room for more people to really get that number of 24 pints. It is July, and blood is in short supply, as usual. Donors receive a dry bag and a $15 e-card to match to the merchant of their choice while supplies last. So being at the beginning of this is a good thing. Uh, reserve your slot at www.redcrossblood.org and search for ZIP44094 or call 1-866-236-3276. Um, I have script today to sell and I also have equal exchange items coffee, oil available today, and they are at sale prices. Everybody loves a sale. <laughs> I'll make one other announcement. Uh, the, the speak or the microphones that we bought were $1,500. And uh, I know a few people have, have offered in the past since we had so many problems in the Dell and in here uh, to make contributions. If you want to help offset that cost, you can make a contribution to the Memorial Discretionary Fund. If not, it is what it is. Thank you. Stephen has an announcement. Charlie Bush is doing very well after his dental surgery, and he thanks you very much for the card and also for the wonderful birthday celebration a few weeks ago. Anything else? At 11.30 today, we will gather in the Anchor Lamp Room for the first video of Saving Jesus, for those that want to attend. And it is air-conditioned in there. Um, today at 5 is a Zoom social hour. And I'm to ask if Don and Mary are available to host. Mary says yes. And that is all the announcements that I have. So if you could please stand as you're able for our closing hymn, number 19. Thank you, Barb. Faithfulness 
presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with him thousand beside. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, your hand has guided. Great is your faithfulness, God unto. Go forth from this place holding on to God's love for you, remembering to offer patience and kindness to all that you meet. Let the Spirit guide your steps, and may we always live with hope, peace, joy, love, and seek justice. Amen. And we will be the uh, easy saving Jesus will be in the anchor lamp room.